After a quarter of an hour, Howard stopped painting, looked for a long time at Dorian Gray, and then for a long time at the picture, biting the end of one of his huge brushes and frowning. It is quite finished, he cried at last, and stooping down, he wrote his name in long vermilion letters on the left-hand corner of the canvas. Lord Henry came over and examined the picture. It was certainly a wonderful work of art, and a wonderful likeness as well. My dear fellow, I congratulate you most warmly, he said. It is the finest portrait of modern time. Mr. Gray, come over and look at yourself. The lad started as if awakened from some dream. Is it really finished? He murmured, stepping down from the platform. Quite finished, said the painter. And you have sat splendidly today. I'm awfully obliged to you. That is entirely due to me, broke in Lord Henry. Isn't it, Mr. Gray? Dorian made no answer, but passed listlessly in front of his picture and turned towards it. When he saw it, he drew back, and his cheeks flushed for a moment with pleasure. A look of joy came in his eyes, as if he had recognized himself for the first time. He stood there motionless and in wonder, dimly conscious that Hallward was speaking to him, but not catching the meaning of his words. The sense of his own beauty came on him like a revelation. He had never felt it before. Basil Howard's compliments had seemed to him to be merely the charming exaggeration of friendship. He had listened to them, laughed at them, forgotten them. They had not influenced his nature. Then had come Lord Henry Wotton, with his strange panegyric on youth, his terrible warning of its brevity that had stirred him at the time, and now, as he stood gazing at the shadow of his own loneliness, the full reality of the description flashed across him. Yes, there would be a day when his face would be wrinkled and wizened, his eyes dim and colorless, the grace of his figure broken and deformed, the scarlet would pass away from his lips and the gold steal from his hair. The life that was to make his soul would mar his body, he would become dreadful, hideous, and uncouth. As he thought of it, a sharp pang of pain struck through him like a knife and made each delicate fibre of his nature quiver. His eyes deepened into amethyst and across them came a mist of tears. He felt as if a hand of ice had been laid upon his heart. Don't you like it? cried Hallwood at last, stung a little by the loud silence, not understanding what it meant. Of course he likes it, said Lord Henry. Who wouldn't like it? It's one of the greatest things in modern art. I will give you anything you like to ask for it. I must have it. It is not my property, Harry. Whose property is it? Dorian's, of course, answered the painter. He's a very lucky fellow. How sad it is, murmured Dorian Gray with his eyes still fixed upon his own portrait. How sad it is. I shall grow old and horrible and dreadful, but this picture will remain always young. It will never be older than this particular day of June. If it were only that other way, if it were I who was always young and the picture that was to grow old, for that, for that, I would give everything. Yes, there is nothing in the whole world I would not give. I would give you my soul for that. You would hardly care for such an arrangement, Basil, cried Lord Henry laughing. It would be rather hard lines on your work. I should object to that very strongly, Harry, said Howard. Dorian Gray turned and looked at him. I believe you would, Basil. You like your art better than your friends. I am no more to you than a green bronze figure. Hardly as much, I dare say. The painter stared in amazement. It was so unlike Dorian to speak like that. What had happened? He seemed quite angry. His face was flushed and his cheeks were burning. Yes, I, he continued. I am less to you than your ivory Hermans or your silver fawn. You will like them always. How long will you like me? Till I have my first wrinkle, I suppose. I know now that when one loses one's good looks, whatever they may be, one loses everything. Your picture has taught me that. Lord Henry Watton is perfectly right. 
youth is the only thing worth having. When I find that I'm growing old, I shall kill myself. Harwood turned pale and caught his hand. Dorian, Dorian, he cried, don't talk like that. I have never had such a friend as you, and I shall never have such another. You are not jealous of material things, are you? You who are finer than any of them? I am jealous of everything whose beauty does not die. I am jealous of the portrait you have painted of me. Why should it keep what I must lose? Every moment that passes, take something from me and give something to it. Oh, if it were only the other way. If the picture could change and I could always be what I am now. Why did you paint it? It will mock me some day. Mock me horribly. The hot tears welled in his eyes. He tore his hand away and flinging himself in the divan. He buried his face in the cushions as though he were praying. This is your doing, Harry, said the painter bitterly. Lord Henry shrugged his shoulders. It is the real Dorian Gray, that is all. It is not. If it is not, what have I to do with it? You should have gone away when I asked you, he muttered. I stayed when you asked me, was Lord Henry's answer. Harry, I can't quarrel with my two best friends at once. 